Thank you, everyone. So this is always the challenge. They, they feed the children sugar just before I have to preach. <laughs> so last night um, at our Christmas Eve service, there are the children running around, the parents trying to chase them. So most of the adults were out for this part of the service. But I just want to clarify something. My son said he had an accident with a lawnmower. That sounds a lot worse than it is. He kicked his toe in the garage with a stationary lawnmower. So please don't picture limbs being chopped off because I make him cut the, the grass. But welcome to Christmas service. This is the time of the year where we celebrate the, the birth of Jesus. And um, it is a different celebration for us. Face masks and hand sprays and socially distant um, services and smaller services. I'm really grateful that we can be together as a family. We are expecting some possible changes to our regulations with our church services, possibly with our numbers escalating at the moment. So let's enjoy this time where we can be as a family. If you have your Bible here today, please would you turn to Luke chapter 2 as we look at the account of um, Luke's account of the birth of Jesus. And today we're going to look at this um, emotion called joy. So Luke 2 verse 1 to 3 says this, At this time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a, a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. All returned to their ancestral towns to register for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, um, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. That night there, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them, and they were terrified. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. So he brings this announcement, I bring you good news that is going to bring great joy to all people. Everyone loves good news, especially when it relates to you. When your friend gets the promotion or your friend buys the new car, you say, I'm glad for you, I'm happy for you. But it's really good news when it's your good news. That's when it becomes good news of great joy. And today I'm trusting that this message of the Christian story is personal to you, that you can experience this good news that brings great joy. Now I want to play a video clip of an airline that I think in 2013 was still making money, um, and they decided to bless their customers on a flight um, the one evening. So let's watch this, and then we'll talk about happiness and joy that we see in this video with some customers. Twas a night before Christmas, and all across the land, the good folks of WestJet had a miracle planned. On the eve before flying, the guests were in their beds. Visions of traveling danced in their heads. While out on the runway, something secret had arrived. It was left in the lounge. Twas a Christmas surprise. Christmas this year, Cohen. A choo-choo train. Ho, ho, ho. A classic. Do you like Thomas? <laughs> what would mommy and daddy like for, for Christmas? Big TV. Yeah, big TV. Ho, ho, ho. A big TV. You're looking fabulous. Oh, I need to. It's okay if you just want to stare at me as well. <laughs> what I need is uh, new socks and underwear. An Android tablet. Is that William beside you? And Cameron? <laughs> Some Santa boots. Stuff and 
While the guests told their Christmas wishes to good old St. Nick, Wes Jetters took notes and got ready to shop quick. It was a great rush with the two flights in the air to get all those presents. Not a moment to spare. The same bells ring and there's children singing the night. Lights are bright when the know it's a beautiful sight. The snow flakes fall in the world and snowy and white. Santa's coming to town and it's coming to night. Okay, Thomas, let's get Christmas cheer and celebrations all across the land. Thanks for flying with us at WestJet. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of your flight. Happy faces were all so merry and bright. And Santa's coming to town, coming Was everything ready? We all had to wait for the moment of truth at Carousel 8. expected what they'd asked of St. Nick would actually appear. It was all quite a trick. A West Jetter would say it was more than mere fun. Miracles do happen when we all work as one. We'll give Santa the last word on this most special night. Merry Christmas to all and to all a good flight. Docks and socks, really. I wish they could have won those doors opened and that big flat screen TV came out. I wish they could have zoomed up on the guy that said jocks and socks <laughs> for everything to choose from. Normally around those, those carousels waiting for your luggage, there is an emotion of anxiety. I hope my bag made it. And it was so exciting to see the surprise. It was so great to see the happiness the joy, the joy of tears as, as that lady got that camera and she just burst into tears. Surprises, everyone loves those surprises. What is this good news? If you were to take a flight and someone said there is good news that when you get to the end of this flight that you were going to get a gift. Today we celebrate this gift. And today um, over this Christmas season, we use words like happiness. We use words like joy. And we use words such as Mary. I got an email that, um, there we go, that said that the, the subject of the email said, glam gifts plus perfect prices equals joy. This was from a, one of the pharmaceutical country, I mean companies that was trying to get me into their shop to buy some things. But is that joy? Is that the joy when I see joy all around the shopping centers? What does that mean to most people? How is it that we can sing joy to the world in this time when the world is in such a mess, when there is so much disruption, pain, suffering going on at the moment? How can we sing joy to the world when we still have so much uncertainty ahead of us? Many people don't feel very happy at the moment. 
The atmosphere in the country and the world is not of happiness. It's not of joy. So I believe that we can sing at the end of the service, joy to the world. I want to trust that despite the chaos we're seeing, that we can sing joy to the world and really believe it and mean it. But before we get to that point, I want to look at what happiness is. I want us to look at this word. Sorry, Dean, it's not working. I want us to look at this word, happiness. If we were to be honest with ourselves, most of us want to be happy. I think if we have 100 people here today, 99 or 100 out of 100 would say, I want to be happy in 2021. It is a deep desire of ours to be happy. Yes? How many of us, if we were to be honest, would see it as a goal of our lives? Our goal is to be happy. My goal is to be happy. And why wouldn't be? Why wouldn't we be when the narrative of the, the world and our culture says, do whatever makes you happy, pursue happiness? Um, in your work, in your relationships, in your free time, in your hobby, just do what makes you happy. If it doesn't make you happy and if it doesn't make someone else happy, then that is all good. I remember a song by Cheryl Crow for some of the older people here today. She says, if it makes you happy, it can't be that bad. If it makes you happy, then why are you so sad? And that is the, the narrative. If it makes you happy, go for it. Even though it may not align with what God's principles and way, ways are, but our, our goal of society is to be happy. Our hearts lock onto certain things that we believe will make us happy. Who knows that Pharrell Williams song? I think some of the younger kids will because they've watched The Spickle With Me many times. It, it goes, because I'm happy, clap along if you feel like a room without a roof. I don't get that part. Because I'm happy, clap, clap along if you feel like happiness is the truth. And then he says this, clap along if you know what happiness is to you. It's a fun conversation to have around the table. Happiness is dot, dot, dot for you. For my wife, it is having lots of pets and having lots of dogs and puppies around her. But happiness may not be that for me. What is happiness to you? And our hearts lock onto things that we believe will make us happy. And I want to say to you today, I don't believe our goal in our lives should be happiness. I don't believe that should be the ultimate goal that we have. Reason being is because when we look at this word happy, it comes from this Middle English term hap, H-A-P, which means chance or good luck. We can see the remnants of this in our words perhaps. See the H-A-P and happenstance. How many of you have used the word happenstance? It is a circumstance especially that is due to chance, happenstance, happiness. So most of the time, happiness is always, almost, always associated with the circumstance. It is almost always circumstantial. Perhaps I will be happy when, dot, 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 when I get that promotion, when I get married, when I have children, when my children sleep through the night, when my children finish school, when my children move out, move out of home. And we have this perhaps to happiness. Yes? We had an experience like that at the end of the year. We were like, oh, finally we can see the end of 2020. We're going on holiday. We're going to the Eastern Cape. We are then going to be happy. I will then be happy when I get to the beach. And then we get to the beach, and for whatever reason, the weather in the Eastern Cape was miserable. We've got pictures of Malayans sitting in jackets on the beach, because you know, us Joburgers still have to go to the beach if the weather's bad. Only one's on the beach, but we were there. And all of a sudden, we're like, oh, how can we be happy when the weather's so miserable? And then the weather started to improve, and we could now start suntanning, and then they closed the beaches, and they, they deemed the Eastern Cape as a hot spot, and everything changed. But at least we could go to the rivers. The rivers were at least still open. But I remember walking with my son Samuel, and we're walking, and he's like, Dad, I can't use my bodyboard, and I can't bodyboard in the sea. And we were going, we cannot let this circumstance determine our happiness, our enjoyment of this holiday. Because our happiness is so dependent on certain things that we attach our happiness to. I will be happy this afternoon, possibly, if my wife is happy with me, 
or if my children aren't fighting, or if there is no bad news in my life, or if, the, and we can go on and on. Can you see how we associate our happiness with circumstance? Happiness is based on happenings. We're seeking the sense of euphoria. I want to be more happy in 2021. I want to laugh more. I want to feel like I'm in a good mood more often than none. I think I'm sure my whole family is saying the same thing. I wish my dad or my husband was more happy. Maybe nudge your husband and say, I would be happier if you weren't so stressed out at the office, or stressed out when you get home. And we have these desires. Now, I don't want to say it's wrong to desire to be happy, but I want to differentiate happiness from this Greek word, from this word that we find in this passage. So if it is your life's pursuit to be happy, then you are basing it on what? Chance. Because happiness is chance, circumstance. And I don't want to leave my happiness in 2021 up to chance. Anyone play the lotto? So don't be afraid, he says in Luke 2 verse 10. The angel said, I bring you good news that will bring great Chara, which is the Greek word for this word, this Greek word, Chara, where we get the definition joy. We find the words from this, this Greek word joy, delight, exhilaration, rejoicing, gladness. It is this Greek noun that describes this inner feeling of gladness, delight, or rejoicing. And I, over this period, I'm on holiday trying to pray for the service. You can ask my extended family. It, it really got to me that I couldn't package joy in a nice, simple sentence. When you study this word, there are 20 odd Hebrew words, there are over seven Greek words, and over 150 references of joy in the Bible. It is a complicated word. It is hard to just sum up in a sentence because it's got to do with delight, joy, acceleration. Rejoicing, uh, rejoicing, gladness. And one of the definitions I found that someone tried to define joy as is the abiding and pervasive sense of well-being. I don't know how that resonates with you. The abiding and pervasive, it takes over sense of well-being. And I asked Grant, what do you think about this definition? And he said, it's probably more the abiding and pervasive sense of ultimate well-being, where, where God is renewing all things and our trials will one day end. But when we look at joy in the New Testament, it is, always, it is normally always associated to signify a feeling of happiness that is based on spiritual realities and is independent on happenings, circumstances. This is why we can look at stories in the Bible. We can look at Paul and Silas in Acts 16 verse 22 where they are beaten with rods, they are stripped and they are thrown into prison. And yet, for whatever reason, they can, they can tap into a joy and still rejoice and still pray and still sing despite their circumstance. So that's not just a choice you make. It's not just like, huh, I'm going to be happy. I'm just, going to, I'm just going to rejoice. There is a tapping into this joy that is a joy of the Lord. Why does the, the, the word talk about the joy of the Lord is your strength? What does that mean? How can I experience this joy in my life in 2021? And I like this word abiding, the abiding and pervasive sense of well-being because in John 15 verse 11, John 15 is all about the abiding in him. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I remain in you, you're going to produce fruit. And then in verse 11, he says this, I have told you this. Jesus says, I have told you this so that my joy, everyone say my joy, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy, everyone say your joy, your joy may be complete or the NLT translation says overflow. So there is this idea of that my joy will be in you, that you'll experience my joy in those difficult circumstances when life isn't going according to plan and you may not be feeling happy. Experience my joy. Tap into that joy. And then your joy would then overflow. Be evident. Be real. Be something that you can experience, something that you can choose, that your joy would be complete 
It is his joy that remains in us that makes our joy full. Joy comes from God. This actually joy comes from the work of the Holy Spirit because joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. This is why I'm saying it's so hard to package into a simple sentence that says, just, it's just this happiness that you feel, but it's a supernatural thing. It is a work of the Holy Spirit, joy being a fruit. And then we read in Scripture, rejoicing. It's this your joy that is then outworked in rejoicing. Sing joyfully to the Lord. Um, shout of joy. Um, you just have to read Psalms and you'll find that word joy used so often. Uh, G.K. Chesterton said this, joy is the gigantic secret of the Christian. My question is why? And some, and some, and some preachers, theologians, try and really separate happiness and joy to quite an extent where they're like, joy is a Christian word, happiness is not a Christian word. But happiness and joy still are interlinked, are still interchangeable. But there's something about joy that gives Christians, followers of Christ, a strength if the word says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Why is joy this gigantic, gigantic secret to the believers, to the followers of Christ. Because this joy is not dependent, based on chance. If happiness is dependent on certain things being in place, the right weather, the right temperature, the right mood, the right bank balance, the right job, the right wife, it is based on chance, circumstance. But joy goes beyond that because it is found in a person and that's that person is Jesus. Joy is found in a person. So if you are in the middle of uncertainty, loss, pain, difficulty, in any circumstance, we can experience joy. Why does James say in chapter one, verse two, two count it all joy when you face trials of various sorts? Why does Jesus say, or why does it say in Hebrews about Jesus, for the joy set before him endured the cross, scoring its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the Father? I don't think he was happy on the cross, but yet there was the joy set before him, a joy that he could experience despite his circumstance. I don't believe scripture tells us to do things we can't do. What about this scripture verse? Always be joyful. That sounds impossible if it is based on a feeling of happiness, because I don't know if you've met anyone that is always happy. But yet it says, always be joyful, never stop praying, be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Jesus Christ. If you're a follower of Christ, if you belong to him today, there is this call for you to, despite your circumstance, to be thankful, to be grateful, to rejoice, to pray, and to experience joy. I don't know about you, but I want a revelation of joy. I want God to reveal this joy that I believe he makes available in all circumstances. You may be watching online today and you may be going through a financially difficult time. You may be facing a tough 2021. And we've got to end the year by saying, happy 2021. And we're saying, we hope that, that like the lotto, that certain things are in place so that you can experience happiness. I want to say, may you experience the joy of Jesus in 2021. A joy, a joy that I want to return to, that I want to experience. So what is it about the Christmas story that brings this good news of joy to all people? I said in the beginning, this has to be personal for you to experience this joy of this good news. Remember, I could have been at the airport with this analogy of this flight, I could have been on a different flight and I could have looked at them going, Shish, I'm happy for them. Check out that TV. <laughs> and there could be people sitting here watching today going, well, I'm happy for, I'm happy that it is the birth of Jesus. Yay, we celebrate Christmas. But it is not a joy of this is personal to me. Jesus Emmanuel, God with us, who is our source of joy, came. So this is the reason why we can be joyful. 
this, news, this good news, because the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today. This season represents the birth of Emmanuel, God with us, who is our source. Sam Storm says this, joy is not necessarily the absence of suffering, but it is the presence of God. We can experience joy in this broken world. I don't know if we'll fully ever experience the joy because of the brokenness of this world, but one day we might. But it is the presence of God with us. He knows you, he loves you, he is with you, he is walking it through with you, and can you experience his presence in these circumstances? So that's why Habakkuk says, in Habakkuk 3, verse 17 to 18, that even though the fig trees have no blossoms and there are no grapes on the vines and even though olive crops fell and the fields lie empty and barren, and even though the flocks die in the fields and the cattle barns are empty, even though 2021 for the world may not bring great happiness, even though your circumstance, your situation you're facing right now does not look hopeful, your bank account, your job situation, your pay cut, the economy that we're dealing with, the state of this nation, South Africa, may not be where we want it to be. But can we still say, as this verse says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. Yet will I. What will 2021 hold for us? God knows. You know, Lord. Lord. But may we experience your peace, your love, your joy, your presence in the uncertainty and the disruption that we are facing in this time. So my prayer for you is that as we conclude this series in the emotions of Christmas, I said last night, Pete got to preach on hope, and that's a great topic to preach on in this time. Why do I get joy most people are not that happy. There is this mood of unhappiness. Now I have to speak on joy. But if we get it right, we can experience his joy. If we, don't, if, if we get it wrong and we base it on happiness, if we make that distinction, then we're leaving it to chance. And I don't want to leave it to chance. I want to tap into his joy. So I want to invite the, the worship team up. And we are going to sing Joy to the World, a version of Joy to the World. And I'm going to ask you, despite what you are going through, for those that are at home online, for those that are here in this auditorium, despite your circumstance, despite your situation, last night someone was telling me they just got back from their holiday and walked into a difficult situation, despite... Your circumstance you are facing right now. Can you for a moment re uh, choose to rejoice? Will you for a moment say, Jesus, I want to tap into your joy that you've given me so that my joy can be full and overflowing? Give us, God, a revelation of the joy that is our strength, this good news that we experience today of great joy. So won't you stand with us? Help us, Father, to be able to say, yet we will rejoice in you. Help us to be able to say, we will be joyful in the God of our salvation. Help us to abide in you, that your joy may be in us, and that our joy would be experienced. I pray, Holy Spirit, that produces the fruit of joy. Won't you make this a reality in the darkness, in the mountains, in the storms that lie ahead? Thank you that today we can celebrate the birth of Jesus, that those little hands would defeat death, the gigantic death 
and the weight of sin that lay before you, Jesus. And we celebrate your love, that you so loved us, that you sent Jesus. So let's sing joy to the world.